Yes, Ralph, good morning. Good to have you here. Hey, uh, th this is Kurdish fighters uh, that are scoring wins with no help from us, correct? Well, they are getting some air support from us um, in, in some of their uh, engagements. But there's a, there, sometimes common sense should prevail. And there's a common sense military dictum. Reinforce success. Don't reinforce failure. We should be supplying weapons directly to the Kurds. In an effort to do so failed again in the Senate yesterday for political reasons. But the Kurds will fight. They will fight our mutual enemies. They've got a bunch of dogs in this fight, but instead we insist on channeling weapons through Baghdad or we're worried about offending Turkey when it comes right. to the Kurds in former Syria. And so as a result, we wind up supporting the Iranian-backed hacks in Baghdad because our, our State Department is wed to that extravagant embassy of theirs. And instead of concentrating on destroying our enemies and getting the Kurds who are willing to be surrogates in this fight, we wind up fixating, our State Department fixates on old lines, on old maps, and, and can't see the core of the fight. Yeah, you make a great point, as usual, <laughs> Colonel Peters. Um, and that is about the Kurds. Now, the Kurds uh, want to be separatists. They want to break away from Turkey, and Turkey doesn't want that. So we've been very concerned about offending Turkey by sending enough real firepower to the Kurds to generally ba genuinely back them. But the Peshmerga fighters are the strongest people that could possibly take on ISIS in, you know, in terms of what's available, yeah. right? Well, absolutely. And the Kurds are, are not a unified body. Uh, there right. are Kurds in what used to be Iraq, what used to be Syria, many in Turkey, uh, some all the way up in, in the, the uh, tra Trans-Caucasus, in Iran. And they do want, uh, in some cases, more autonomy, in some cases, more independence. But look, they're willing to fight. The bottom line is they will fight our enemies, our mutual enemies. Instead, we're worried, oh my God, President Erdogan of Turkey, who's rabidly anti-American, we don't want to hurt his feelings. Oh, we don't want to hurt the feelings of the Baghdad government, which belong, essentially belongs to Iran. My God, let's apply, again, common sense, reinforce success. You know, I, I'm just starting to see some of the headlines because Ash Carter is just sitting down. And essentially, um, what we're seeing so far this morning is that the United States is calling for a greater commitment from the Iraqi government. That what we need is more coordination with the Iraqi government, which I know you believe is something that represents a country that, that doesn't even exist. So is that, yeah. you know, we're just barking up the same tree um, and continuing a, a process that has not worked and never worked. Well, it, it's a travesty because... Our State Department, which doesn't get enough scrutiny in this, they are wed to antiquated, Europe, antiquated borders in the Middle East that were drawn by European imperialists almost a century ago. They're dysfunctional, they were dysfunctional borders. They have now all but disappeared. But instead of concentrating on helping to form a new Middle East and above all on destroying our enemies, America's yeah. enemies, our priority becomes this, preserving this fiction that Iraq and Syria can somehow be restored to their former dictatorial borders. Understood. I, I got to go, but I need a real quick answer on this. But is there anybody in the field so far for 2016 that you see that you look at them and you say, you know what, he or she gets it? Well, Lindsey Graham obviously gets it. I mean, there's no question about it. And he's got the cred. But uh, Lindsey Graham is probably too sensible and sane and sober a candidate to make headway in the primaries. Well, thank you very much. Good to see you as always.